morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, Psalms 103 says, Let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. So come on this morning, let's praise the Lord. It said with all of my heart, I will praise the Lord this morning. He said he gives me good things, and I will praise the Lord. He renews my youth like the eagle. Oh God, 
If they begin to lift up praises today, oh God, that chains are going to fall off on today, oh God, and then cover a bishop, oh God. God, saturate him, oh God. God, that he's standing behind the cross today, oh God, that the word that's in his belly, oh God, that it's going to set people free on today, oh God, that it's going to deliver today, oh God, that it's going to shake the very core of hell on today, oh God, for the word that's coming down from heaven, oh God. protection, God. Cover us underneath the blood, oh God. God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, God. God, to purify the air that we breathe, oh God. That every sickness has to move this morning in the name of Jesus, oh God. That anything that is not of you, oh God, that it has to move out the way today, oh God. But deliverance is in the place, oh God. And God, for that, God, we declare victory in this house for today. We know no Oh, 
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
Nokia, but God called me his daughter. God said I'm blessed and highly favored. God said that I'm walking in victory. And he said that we walking through the fire and we won't get burned. That we can stand up and walk in victory because we don't know no defeat. Do you guys feel that this morning? When you lay in your bed sometimes and don't want to get up, he just called you by name and said, get up, my daughter. You 
don't get full and you say, I got to go back for the extra, well, Bible study and Sunday morning manna, that is the extra, the overflow that you need. So sometimes Sunday just won't do it. I got to go back and refill my plate. Sometimes I got to have three portions. So you got Sunday morning manna and Bible study. Come on, y'all, get your cup of coffee.
We talked about our first session, the unmasked, sis, I got you. Amen. So just knowing, sisters, that we got each other. We can't tear each other down. We got to build each other up. So now grab your sister and let's come on and let's eat some of this good food at Champs. Amen? Amen. 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 African Expression Sunday, Sunday, February the 20th. You are welcome to come adorn in your African attire. Let's dress up on February the 20th. Amen? Amen. 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 I got to go find something. <laughs> and that concludes our announcements. Amen. And now we would like to welcome our visitors. Any visitors in the house on today? All right. All right. On behalf of our bishop and our first lady, we welcome you. If you would like to say anything on today, you're welcome. Um, it's my first time attending this church, but I'm from Thomasboro, North Carolina. For those of you who don't know me, I was actually raised here. Um, my grandmother, Marilyn Johnson. I don't know if y'all know or not. My father, Henry Stanley. Um, I am back. I had a dream this morning at 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, and, you know, I, I've been, I'm an ordained minister. I got ordained back in 2012. Been kind of in and out all over the place. I'm active duty military. I'm about to retire here within a year. Um, so, I don't know, I had a dream this morning, and I saw Bishop Frank in my dream, and like, I felt that was God telling me to get back into it. There's no place, there's no place, there's no place like home. Being in the military, I've been all over the world. I have. I, I've been everywhere. So, uh, for me to come back here, there's no place that, that, that feels like home, that worship God the same way that you're used to, that you was raised up in. So yeah. Yeah. I feel like I was telling God, like, I, where do I go? Like, I don't I don't fit into these places. I don't know them, you know? Like, but God was like, I got a place for you. Yeah. 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 Well, now we will hand it over to our bishop. Let's bless him as he's coming up this morning. Come on, let's bless him as he comes up this morning. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Can we just bless God? Amen. For God just being a sovereign God and being grateful, loving to God. Amen. Come on, let's bless God, please. Amen. In this place. Amen. I know we pray and we worship. But when you serve a God like we serve, amen, we can never praise him enough, amen. How many of y'all thankful to be here? Thankful to be in the house of God in his presence, hallelujah. I just honor God because he is awesome. He's amazing, he's magnificent, hallelujah. And I'm glad to be in the house, amen, on this Sunday, amen, you may be seated, amen. We are thankful, so thankful. Amen. I was, you know, last Sunday I was on live watching y'all going in, and I was just so jealous, so jealous. And, and they're having a good time, but I tell you what, I'm here this Sunday. Amen. So I am glad to be here amongst the land of the living and to be with my Grace of Christ family. How many of y'all know I love y'all so much? Amen. I love y'all incredibly much. I thank God you are a gift from God. Amen. I just thank God for uh, the visitors that we have. I thank God for uh, Reverend Michael Fauntleroy. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We grew up together yeah. on the same road, number five school road. Yeah. Amen. We attended church together as well. Bless them, you in the house. Amen. Yeah. So we thank God for, for him being here. I'm glad. I'm thankful for that dream. Yeah. Amen. I'll tell you what, God is God can do some stuff, can't yeah. yeah. Amen. But I'm thankful for God being God all by himself because he knows what to do and how to do. Amen. I thank God for uh, all these uh, visitors on this uh, third row. Amen. 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 I know, you know Mr. Johnson, Brother Dawson, you feel right? Good. You got your family here with you. Amen. You know, Mr. Market, like we always talk about, God is so intentional. Best believe there's always a reason for everything. Yeah. So on today, as we move forward in worship, I want to pause at this point in time because there's something special that I want to do. Amen. I want to ask uh, Mr. Margaret if she would come forth, please, at this time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Evangelist, I'm going to ask if you would just escort her to this seat. Amen. 
Amen. That's not the principal seat, sir. <laughs> Amen. It's not no open rebuke or nothing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I want you to have a seat right here. This is a surprise to you. You didn't know that I was going to do this like this. Um, but God, he dealt with me and he said that I need to do this in this manner. Glory All right. And so on, on today, we understand that you are a minister of the gospel. Yeah. We know that you are a preacher. We know that you are qualified. We know that God has his hand on yeah. your life. Yeah. Amen. Glory. Glory. But today, I wanted to take a special moment just to affirm what's already been done. Amen. I am so, uh, I'm so thankful that God sent you here yes, to serve you. Yeah. You and your son, I'm thankful that you've come to serve. And yes. something, something that I believe is special is that as a, as a pastor, as a leader, those that come in the fold, um, it's always good to affirm who they are. Amen. And it's good to affirm privately, but it's also good to affirm publicly. So today, I want to affirm you as a minister of the gospel um, under um, my leadership, under Woo! Embrace of Christ Fellowship yeah, Church. Yeah. So we're going to go through just a little bit, and we have a few things for you on today. Amen. But that's why you see all of them here. <laughs> Your pastor kind of sneaky, but in a holy way. In a holy way, amen. But you're so deserving of this moment. And this is a sacred moment. This is a moment that I take very serious because I know that you are called. I know that God has his hand upon you. And so I'm not doing anything that God hasn't already done. I'm just coming in faith, believing that God will manifest in his life, even in your life, even yeah. more. Yeah. I'm going to ask this time, if evangelists, if you would come up, if you would um, read this scripture. Um, this scripture is what I like to call a charge. It's a charge to, to you to, as you go continuously in the ministry. I just want you to remember the words of this uh, writer Paul that he wrote to Timothy in that fourth chapter. That's 2 Timothy chapter 4. I want you to hear these first five verses. I want you to hear the charge. Because as Paul has charged Timothy, I'm charging you. Evangelist. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch, though in all things endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Amen. As you have heard the reading of God's word, if you heard the charge that we've given unto you, at this time, we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray a covering over you. It's nothing like when you come into a, a new uh, fellowship um, and you have that covering of your pastor. And I believe in the laying of hands. The Bible says, don't um, lay hands on no man suddenly. Um, but there is direction in which sometimes that the laying of hands is necessary. So as I lay hands upon you and as I pray and as we as a congregation pray, uh, we're just praying that um, God just have his way and that you would feel an impartation on today. Because I, I believe that this is this is not just a uh, just us going through a protocol, but I believe that this is a move of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let every heart pray. God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for being a God that, that knows what you're doing. Lord, you have done amazing things through the work of this vessel, God, by way of Minister Margaret Johnson, God. And Lord, we're asking right now, Lord, as we lay hands on her and as we pray for her, God, Lord, we're asking, Lord, that you will continue to stir the gift that's in her. Lord, continue to build that fire on the inside of her God. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you will help her to be instant in season and out of season. Lord, I ask that you will give her the courage to correct, 
proof, God, and to, to say what needs to be said, God. Lord, we understand we're living in a time where people have itching ears. But, Lord, in spite of all that, Lord, I ask, Lord, that your sound doctrine will come from our lips. Lord, and that it will breathe on certain people. Lord, that they might be able to have an experience with you and your word. Lord, that they know that they have life in you. And, Lord, that you have a plan for them. God, Lord, I ask that you continue to be with Minister Margaret as she goes forth, God. Lord, I ask that you continue, Lord, to direct her path. God, continue, Lord, to put people in her path, Lord, in which she is to, to help and that she's to direct, God. Lord, continue to put that boldness in her to be able to speak your word, even in times of awkwardness and times of, of question, Lord. Lord, let her not compromise anything, but, Lord, allow her to be a, a bold vessel for you. God, Lord, we ask that you'll breathe on her right now. Lord, breathe on her, God, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, God. Lord, we believe on today, Lord, that you are imparting something into her, Lord, that's going to ignite her and to make her even better in you for your service, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you for your call. We thank you for this ministry and her personality. God, cover her. Help her to endure affliction. Help her to do the work of evangelists. Help her to be able to call your word on the spot. Your word. Help her right now. Lord, we kind of done right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have something for you. They say you're not supposed to drive without a driver's license. Likewise in the gospel field. I proudly and excitedly present this certificate of license. This certifies that you, Minister Margaret E. Johnson, has been given evidence has, has, has given evidence of being called by God into the gospel ministry to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ as much as the opportunity to arise and to exercise your gifts in the work of ministry. In testimony whereof I have hereunto set my hand and seal the sixth day of February in the year of the Lord 2022. Bishop Michael L. Frank, senior pastor, Embracing Christ Fellowship Church. I present this certificate to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm one of them preachers that I don't just give you a license. Amen. But I give you something to help you to be able to appropriately utilize those licenses. Amen. So I want to present this Bible to you. Um, as we have in conversation, I know you have plenty of King James Version Bibles. <laughs> so what I what I did, I said, you know what, I think she need that new living translation. <laughs> Amen. But I want to present this to you. Uh, this is the new living translation. You can read that as, as you see fit. That doesn't mean you got to preach from it. <laughs> I'm not one of those type of pastors and leaders. As God leads you in the word, that's how you go forth. Amen. And you know, something else is good. The Bible is good, but I'm a study of God's Word. Amen. And God has uh, literature that is inspired by the Word of God to help us to be able to rightly divide the Word of Truth. And so this commentary right here is phenomenal. I'm actually about to get you one. <laughs> but this is for you to be able to go deeper into the Word of God. I want you to know that you can go as deep as you want to go, because God, he will make sure that he reveals what it is that you need to see. So I present this to you. Amen. Amen. And so we got one more thing for you. Amen. <laughs> because it's always appropriate. Okay, I want to embrace the Christ. Y'all stand. We got some goodies for you.
faces up with the dates of all the places that you're going to have to go. All the places you never met. Leave Sunday for a brisk <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> then I was looking, looking, and I saw this devotion, Jesus with you. Because he hears you and you talk to him. So just for letting you know that he does hear you. You know, I'm a multicolored child. <laughs> so as he gives you what you need, so you can ride him in different colors. He talked to, talk to you about me riding in pink. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, so when you come to Sunday morning, matter. All right. All right. You got your cup for your cup. Amen. Amen. Be still and know Amen. that He is God. such a gift to us, hasn't she? Amen. I look forward to hearing her comments at Bible study. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I want to I want to take this moment to introduce um, her to you in this fashion um, because starting March, fifth of March, she will be holding the position here at Embracing Christ as Minister of Christian Education. not see me teaching, you're going to be seeing her teaching. Right. In that role, what she's going to do, she's going to work closely with me. She's going to help be able to prepare Bible studies in the Sunday morning manners. She's going to take lead in Sunday morning manners, so she'll be starting teaching in March. She'll be the lead teacher in that. So, yeah, good work. The pastor gets to sit down a little bit. But you know, I, I like to talk, so I'll be there for But anyway. But I just want to say congratulations for doing a phenomenal job. And thank you so much for trusting um, me and trusting this church to be able to be a place where you can call home. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. 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 God is doing great things, and I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm so grateful to be able to be under such a mighty man of God. Amen. Bishop Frank is such a knowledgeable, amen, preacher. Um, and pastor, and I, I'm just grateful just to be able to sit up under his teaching. Amen. I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm excited about where God is taking me in this ministry. Amen. I'm, I just love God. And I love this ministry, and I'm grateful that God sent me here. Amen. For such a time as this, I know that the Lord sent me here. Amen. Amen. He spoke to me, and he spoke to my spirit. Amen. He allowed me to know that this is where I'm supposed to be. Amen. When God plants you somewhere, stay there. Yeah. Amen. And make sure that God is speaking. Amen. So I'm, like I said again, I thank God for embracing Christ. Thank God for all of you guys that have shown me such great love. And I, I appreciate you. And I thank God for my family being here. Amen. I was wondering why they were all coming. I said, <laughs> amen. But I thank God for them. Amen. And their support. Amen. Pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. 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 Family, would any of y'all like to have any words? Y'all can stand, you can come up here, however you want to do it. I know Pastor Barton, I know he has something for us. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, wow. I just want to say uh, it's good to be here, to be an honor to the pastor of this house, the bishop and his wife, and the Christ Christ family. I just want to say it's such an honor to see my sister uh, give this. And be here in this place at this time Amen. because God has uh, moved her into this place yeah. at this time for his glory. Yeah. And with understanding that, and, and a lot of times she might have been thinking, God, are you thinking about me? I, have, yeah. I can say to you, when you think he's not thinking about yeah. you, he's thinking about you. Yeah. And, and that goes yeah. to everybody. We thank God is not thinking about you, yeah. he's thinking about you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just thank you. Uh, Bishop, uh, my sister, I say to you, my nephew, you under great care. Yes, this man amen, has a amen. heart for God, yes. a heart for people, yes. and he's very patient. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 So, Bishop, thank you.
I'll just say really quickly, I'm, I'm so happy and so proud of my mom. She's been um, preaching for a long time and just to see you have this moment um, to get your license and just on what God is about to do. I'm so happy for you, so proud of you and just looking forward to see what God is about to do because like, you haven't even scratched the surface and he hasn't um, even began to show you what he, where he's going to take you. So yeah, I'm excited. Thank you, um, Bishop Frank. Like everybody said, just being under your teaching and just a mighty man of God and just enjoying it. I'm just like being fed so much. Like, if I just said, I'm looking at getting, getting real heavy in the spirit, you know. <laughs> but just, um, just being in the ministry and just um, getting the teachers. So I'm just thankful. So thank you. Amen. Amen.
God this morning and all that he's done thus far in the service. Amen? Amen. But it is time to pull your, table, your chair up to the table, yes. bring your plate to the buffet, and get ready for what God is downloading to us on today. Amen? Amen. So open up your heart, your mind, and your spirit as we receive Bishop Michael Frank as he comes up to preach the word this morning. Come on, let's receive Bishop this morning. Amen. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. So again, just thankful to be in the house. Thankful to be here. Thankful to see everybody. Amen. I honor everybody and respect the place. Amen. It is so good to see everybody. Amen. I cannot say that enough because in this day and time, sometimes you don't see folks about months. Not so much that you're trying to hide, but because of the time that we're in, <laughs> sometimes it only affords us the opportunity to see each other. Um, when we can see each other. Amen? Amen. So I'm glad to see. Y'all glad to see me? Yeah! yeah. Thank you up here. Up here. Up here. Show boxing. Y'all ain't gonna show boxing. Too. Amen. <laughs> I just play with you. Amen. But it is, it is a blessing to be able to be in the house of God. Amen. Amen. We are excited this morning because we are about to enter into a new of series, amen, and just before I do that, I do want to honor, uh, we thank God for events, so Kia's doing a phenomenal job, I want to be here today, we thank God for our praise team, amen, give God a praise for him, we thank God for the musicians, amen, we thank God for uh, the Gita Sheila, amen, at the table, we thank God for uh, Sister Donna, Sister Tanya in the back, we thank God for being afraid God his help in the back, again, amen. Amen. I need everybody to point to um, Sister Kanika right now. Everybody. You ain't got to know details. Just point to her. I want y'all to say, it's already done. It's already done. Say, it's already done. It's already done. Say, it's already done. It's already done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, she'll let you know the details later. Amen. 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 That's it. Amen. But we thank God for everybody that is in their uh, respective place. Amen. Um, certainly, we're going to uh, we want to not prolong, amen, because we want to get in this word so um, we can say what needs to be said and <clears throat> we can sit on down. Um, but we know that, um, I think that you can um, see that we are about to enter into a new series um, called Momentum. I believe that some of you yeah. on Facebook, you might have seen uh, that Emmy awarded uh, commercial. <laughs> amen. And we thank God for our wonderful producer. Amen, Sister Rodney Prince. Amen. Praise the Amen. And we thank God for her. Amen, y'all. Really, we really need to tell her. You uh, really tell her thank you for real because she has done a, a fabulous job making yeah. sure that we have an online presence. Amen. I know some people think the internet is the devil, but I tell you what, God will use the devil. <laughs> Amen. And so we just want to say thank you and we appreciate your giftings. Amen. Uh, we now have uh, Minister Kyron that's jumping on board and he's also helping. So we thank you for him as well. And, and we're just trying to make sure that we reach all that we can. You know? Sometimes it surprises me when I get inboxes for different ones that say, yeah, I was watching service and, I'm, you know, they stay connected. So, y'all, we just don't realize that beyond these walls, um, in that world, that technology world, there are people that are connected to this ministry. And so we should thank God for that. Amen. Amen. We give God praise. But we are in this new series of Momentum. Um, <clears throat> I do want to say, y'all, if I call, I promise you it's not because I don't I don't have anything. I promise you. <laughs> and man, it's just a little scratchy, but I promise you it's, it's not what you think. I promise you. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, everything ain't COVID. Everything ain't COVID. Oh, cool. Did y'all feel that? <laughs> That's the word for you. Amen. Amen. Amen, but it's really not. But um, I just want to let you know, so if you hear me call, but I'm not going to call for your face. I promise mm -hmm. I promise you I won't. Amen. But we want to get into this word. Amen. Because I love this, what God has placed up in my spirit. Amen. And I'm excited for the coming weeks as we um, dive into this sermon series, Momentum. Somebody say Momentum. 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 And where are we going to start today? We want to start in the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah, we're going to go to that fourth chapter. So I want y'all, if you have your Bibles, if you have your technology gadgets, if you will somehow navigate to the book of Nehemiah, chapter four. Nehemiah, chapter four. 
God is so, there's so much in Nehemiah. I tell you, I could, I could, I could stay here all day talking about um, just so many things that you can pull from Nehemiah, but we're not going to do that. We're going to just pull a few things, and then we're going to get ready, get ready for next Sunday to hear what it is that God has for us. Amen. I am going to ask if you would please stand to your feet as we read. I'm going to read about 18 verses so I can prepare your minds and your hearts for that. Man. Key, it's good to see you. It's good to see you, girl. I'm glad CBS let you go. Amen. Amen. That's your daughter and your grandma. Y'all see Colette's grandbaby back there? Oh, pretty sad. Y'all think she look like me? <laughs> no? <Nah, okay. laughs> Y'all know we be claiming stuff. <laughs> Amen. But let us read. We're in chapter 4, verse 1, it starts. It says, Sanballat was very angry when he learned that we were rebuilding the wall. He flew into a rage and mocked the Jews, saying in front of his friends and the Samaritan army officers, what does this bunch of poor, feeble Jews think they're doing? Do they think they can build a wall in a single day by just offering a, a few sacrifices? Do they actually think that they can make something of stones from a rubbish heap? and charred ones at that. Tobiah the Ammonite, who was standing beside him, remarked, that stone wall would collapse if even a fox walked along the top of it. Then I prayed, hear us, O God, for we are being mocked. May their scoffing fall back on their own heads, and may, their, or may they themselves become captives in a foreign land. Do not ignore their guilt. Do not blot out their sins, for they have provoked you to the anger here in front of the builders. At last, the wall was completed to half its height around the entire city, for the people had worked with enthusiasm. But when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabs and Ammonites and Ashtonites heard that the work was going ahead and that the gaps in the walls of Jerusalem were being repaired, they were furious. They all made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw us into confusion. But we prayed to our God and guarded the city day and night to protect ourselves. Then the people of Judah began to complain, um, began to complain, the workers are getting tired and there is so much rubble to be moved. We will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. Meanwhile, our enemies were saying, before they know what's happening, we will swoop down on them and kill them and end their work. The Jews who lived, lived near the enemy came and told us again and again, they will come from all directions and attack us. So I placed armed guards behind the lowest parts of the wall in the exposed area. Somebody say exposed. exposed. I stationed the people to stand guard by families armed with swords, spears, and bows. Then, as I looked over the situation, I called together the nobles and the rest of the people and the rest of the people said to them, don't be afraid of the enemy. Okay? Woo. Don't be afraid of the enemy. Uh, Reverend Fonderoy, I believe he was talking about that earlier. Don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious and fight for your, and fight for your brothers and your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. When our enemies heard we knew of their plan and that God had frustrated them, we all returned to our work on the wall. But from then on, only half my men worked while the other half stood guard with spears, shields, bows, coats of mail. The leaders stationed themselves behind the people of Judah who were building the wall. The laborers carried on their work with the one hand supporting the load and one hand holding a weapon. All the builders had a sword Belted to their side, the trumpeteers, the trumpeter stayed with me to sound the alarm, uh, sound the alarm. Amen? Amen? Amen. So what we want to talk about today, we want to use this passage, that was a lot of scripture, wasn't it? Amen, but it's some good stuff. We want to use for a thought, understanding my position in opposition. Understanding my position in opposition. God, what I need for you to come down today, and I need for you to do what you do best, and that is preach your word. I need, Lord, for you to make it clear what it is that you're trying to say. Lord, Lord, I ask that you would just help me to steady myself and to allow uh, me to have the humility to just sit in you and to allow you to dwell. 
But Lord, I ask that you would just use me, God, Lord, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. God, Lord, I'm asking, Lord, that your word would just be articulated clear. Allow me not to be a distraction, but Lord, allow me to be a help to somebody on today. God, Lord, I'm asking, Lord, that you would strengthen my body. Lord, strengthen me, Lord. Lord, for the work that you have for me to do, to serve your people, God. Lord, I'm asking, Lord, that my ways will be your ways. Lord, I ask that my thoughts will be your thoughts. I ask that everything that I do will be glory to your name. Lord, I ask that you would just have your way in this place. This is your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Understanding my position in opposition. Amen. There's a well-known British evangelist, pastor, and author that said something that was profound to me. He said, there is no winning without warfare. There is no opportunity without opposition. There is no victory without vigilance. For whenever the people of God say, let us arise and build, Satan says, let me arise and oppose. On today, I have the assignment to be able to illuminate something in this passage of scripture that you will see both God at work and you also will see the enemy at work. But you will also even greater see how purposeful your life is and how purposeful the work of God is. Anything that is purposeful, it will be. It will have challenge. Anything that is purposeful, it will have some kind of opposition. But in the midst of opposition, we have to realize our stance and our position. We have to understand what it is that God uh, will have for us to know, what he wants us to do, and how he wants us to be ready. Amen? Because today, we're, we're entering into this, into this uh, series talking about momentum. And on my definition, I, I like one definition. I found many definitions of, of momentum, and you're going to hear them all throughout the duration of this series. Uh, but one that I believe that will help you just to grab on to the word momentum is, is that momentum is the strength or force that something has when it is moving. Momentum is the strength or force that something has when it is moving. Isn't it amazing when you feel like you're moving in the right direction that you can experience some kind of force that is trying to either push you back, trying to stop you, trying to hinder you, trying to play with your mind. There is something that is trying to make you get to the thought or get to the place of where you feel like you can't move forward or you can't go on. I'm here to tell you, and I heard, I heard Grandma say this, that if you haven't had any trouble, just wait a while, and then you will have some. But in the little bit of uh, the time that I've been here, in, uh, I guess 33 years I've been here, in some of those years I found out that in my greatest pursuit is when I had my greatest opposition. I found out that the more that I was focused, it seemed like that's the greater that things wanted to try to challenge me and try to make things fall apart. But I'm telling you something, because the day God is, is going to inspire us and, and let us know that in the midst of opposition, that God has created a position for you to be able to stand and to get yeah. through. Yeah. I want somebody to realize that day that you have no reason to be afraid of opposition. Yeah. You have no reason to be afraid of adversity. You have no reason to be afraid of trials and tribulations. Why? Because in the midst of those, God has a posture that he has for you that will help you to be able to gain from the experience and to be able to move forward in spite of what is trying to stop you. Yeah. Now, if you can't get excited about anything, I invite you right there to get excited because the thing is, is that no matter what, no matter what tries to stop you, no matter what tries to challenge you, yeah. it doesn't have the power to stop you. Yeah. It doesn't have the power. But see, that's the thing that you have to know in your mind of where your power comes from. Yeah. You have to know in your mind where your strength comes from. 
You have to know who you connected to that in spite of when opposition shows up, because newsflash, oh, it will, but when it shows up, that there is a will and there's a way for you to be able to get through. Hallelujah. It is not God's plan for you just to die where you are. I need somebody to be encouraged today. But it is God's will that you grab a hold to the truth of who he is and grab a hold uh, to his hand and realize that you have a great power working on your behalf. Yes, yes. But you have to understand because of the power that you're connected to, you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Some of you, you think less of yourself. You think that you, I don't have a title, I don't have this. Truth be told, that title don't matter. Because the thing is, is that when you connect yourself with God, the greatest power that there is, you are a threat. You are a, you are a threat. You have to understand your position in opposition. Huh? The thing is, is that even though you're connected, the enemy's still going to try. Huh? He's still going to try. But, but, but let's get to this word because there's some things that I need for you to see because I love Nehemiah. I love his attitude. I love his assignment in the world. I can, I can start from the beginning and, and, and talk about how Nehemiah was in, this, uh, was in this palace. He was in this foreign land because we know that the people of Israel, they were very disobedient, so they had exiled. And that put um, some of them in a position where um, they, were work, they were close to those that were in the kingdom, in the Babylonian kingdom, and some of those that weren't uh, working so close. But Nehemiah was one of those that not only was he in captivity, but he was he had a a, a role and position in a foreign kingdom. Yeah. It's sort of like if you think about it like this, that um, though we're in the world, we're not of the world. You know, that's why God puts us sometimes in positions on our jobs. He puts us sometimes in position um, in, 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 in the world of, of the corporate world because God wants to use us in the fort, in those four places to be able to make sure that his glory it comes through. Yeah. Yeah. So Nehemiah. Nehemiah, him, he's at this place right here where he's at this uh, palace and he's this cupbearer. He was the one that he, he uh, tested the food before the king would eat the food or drink the wine because the king wanted to make sure that it wouldn't kill him. So Nehemiah had a job. To make, he had a job to make sure he died first if it happened. <laughs> wow, that was a terrible job, wasn't it? <laughs> but Nehemiah, he still carried himself with such excellence and such class, which um, it gave him and earned him a role of being respected by this king, okay? But but what happens here, long story short, amen? Long story short, because I don't want to just harp here for a long time. Long story short, Nehemiah got word that some of those that went back to, uh, that had been released from captivity to go back to their land, to Judah, the, uh, uh, to Jerusalem, he got word that things were not going well. Yeah. He actually got word that the, that the wall was still destroyed. And so Nehemiah, them being that being his people, it really uh, touched his heart to a place of where it took him into a low place. Amen. Amen. And I, I love I love Nehemiah because he teaches us how to handle uh, handle um, uh, something that we hear that takes us to a low place. Yes. Because he didn't go and just have a pity party. Uh -huh. He went and prayed. Yeah. The Bible even says that from the time. Um, that he heard the news from the time that he made a, a, a decision to move forward to be released to go back and help his people, that it says for four months he prayed and fasted. Y'all, yeah. that's amazing because some of us we can't fast for three days. Yeah. So four months, that's something else. Hey, Amen. I'm not trying to pick on nobody, but you know, as you, the more that you do it, the better you will get. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But if you if you stay afraid of it and you never do it, then you're never gonna move forward in it. But he, he fasted and prayed for four months. After that, uh, he went before his king. His king saw that he had he had some thing, you know, had something a burden on him. He said, "You're, you're sad, Nehemiah." You know, he couldn't hide it. He was sad because his people, the the, the, the wall was being destroyed. They, they were in a bad place back home. And so what happens is that the, that Nehemiah began to have a conversation with the king, saying, "You know that I, I need to go. I need to go back, and I need to help my people." And, I need to be an aid to them, and I'm giving y'all the short. I'm giving y'all the short version, amen? amen. But when he went back, he, he went. He, the, the king not only permitted for him to go and go and to be and help his people, but also the, the king made sure that he had the right documents. So on the way, 
Um, he wouldn't have anything to stop him. He also gave him provision, he gave him some wood, gave him some things that would help him and his people to be able to build uh, this wall back and the, and, the, and the door. So the Bible basically carries on and it says that um, that Nehemiah leaves and when he gets there, he surveys the land and he doesn't just start working, but he surveys the land and he's, he's trying to see what he's dealing with. You know, um, the Bible talks about counting the cost. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, before you just jump into something, you have to actually see what is it that I need to do. Yeah. So Nehemiah was at that place where he surveyed and he see and he seen what he needed to do. After that, he went to work. Yeah. Now after he went to work, the Bible it, it, it comes immediately and it says how he how um, he had those that did not appreciate him coming to help the people of God. He, they didn't have, they, they actually was like, what is he doing? You know. Sometimes people will trip over you doing the right thing. That's Some people right. don't, you know, don't know nothing like that. But anyway. <laughs> but they were tripping over that. And so it put Nehemiah in a place where I love him because he didn't respond to what they thought. He continued to build. Yes. He continued to build. And this is where I want to start right here for real. I want to get real preachy right here, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because when you go to that chapter 4. You read, you, as you read, you see some stuff that I'll tell you, it's going to blow, it, it, it just blows, it blew my mind. It's just, just really, really good, amen? Yeah. But the scripture it talks about in Nehemiah chapter 4, it talks about Sanballat. And it says that when Sanballat was, uh, when uh, Sanballat was very angry when he learned that they were rebuilding the wall. Check this out. The Bible says that he flew into a rage and mocked the Jews, say, and saying in front of his friends and the Samaritan army officers. I want you to check this out. He says, what is this bunch of poor people, these poor, feeble Jews, what do they think they do? Oh, 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 they think they can build a wall in a single day? Oh, oh, with just a few offering, of, a few sacrifices? Do they actually think? Do they actually think they can make something of them stones from rubbish heap? Man, they charged ones at that. I want to talk about that right there. Yeah. Because it's amazing how, it's amazing how, in the pursuit of Nehemiah doing this, this wonderful thing for his people, how he's coming, he's, he's doing things in order, he's, he's trying to make sure that he helps his people, he's trying to do a good thing. But it's amazing when you try to do a good thing that sometimes there's this irritant yeah. that tries to stop your momentum to yeah. hinder you from going forward. All right. Now I want you to see this right here because I, you know I, sometimes I guess I read the scripture different but it's, it's still the same. When, 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 when uh, Sam Battle was talking to them when he was saying these things out loud he said what is this bunch of poor people? I want you to understand what he's saying. He said listen what's, what's these, what these, what these uh, 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 low status people doing? Oh, you know they on government assistance. Uh, yeah. Oh, you know they got food stamps. Uh, yeah. Oh, what they put? You know they ain't got. Uh, they, huh? That's that's what you see. Check this out. Then it says. Then it says the feeble people. Uh -huh. He's trying to say they ain't durable. They can't last. They can't yeah. make it. Right. Huh? They not gonna withstand. Man, they feeble Jews. Man, they weaklings. Yeah. They don't eat their weeds. <laughs> Look, they don't eat their vegetables. <laughs> huh? Why? Because they feeble. They ain't durable. Check. But, but that's, not, that's not all that he said. Right? He said, do they actually think they can build a wall in a single day by just offering my few sacrifices? Check this out. One thing that I realize that sometimes that in the midst of what you're doing, that your faith will even be attacked. Yeah. Oh, they say, oh, listen, you, oh, you think that just a few offerings going to help you? Yeah. Uh, a few sacrifices going to help you yeah. to be able to do this thing? And, and check this out. It says, uh, do they actually think they can make something of stone from a rubber sheet and char ones at that? So at that point, they're being challenged by their ability saying that they don't have the ability yeah. to be able to do this thing. Now, this is what I'm trying to get to, and I want to give it to you clearly. You have to understand that in the midst of life, that your status might be uh, challenged. Uh -huh. That your ability might be challenged. Yeah. Your faith might be challenged. Yeah. Your durability might be challenged. Yeah. But the thing in all of that that you 
you have to understand is that when you challenge one piece of me, you're challenging all of me. And all of me, the Bible says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So if you want to challenge just the one part of me, you said I'm weak. Baby, you don't know who my God is, obviously. Huh? You said that I ain't got no money. Baby, you must don't know. My daddy, he on cattle on a thousand hill of ability. You must don't know. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. My faith, you must don't understand that by faith I can move mountains. And check this out. If my faith won't move the mountain, my faith will help me to climb the mountain. Huh? So try to challenge what happened? You got some sin balance, and, and, and we, when we say sin balance, I don't want you just to think about a person. Uh -huh. I want you to think about a spirit, yeah. huh? Yeah. Because if you get caught up on a person, you say you start calling out people. You know that's a sin balance. Uh -huh. yeah. That's but it's a spirit. Yeah. Do you understand that as you go and as you move forward, there is a spirit that wants to pull you back. Yeah. And the way that it wants to pull you is to get to your mind. If that spirit can get to your mind, it can make you stop. It can make you stop. It can make you question yourself, and it also can make you question God. Come on, somebody. Do we realize that in the in the in our pursuit, and we're trying to move forward, trying to move forward, trying to build for the kingdom of God? You have to understand. That the more that you do for God, there's going to be more force that comes against you. Amen. Amen. You know why? Because it's not about you, it's about the work. Yeah, that's right. Huh? Check this out. If 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 so I'm trying to behave myself. I'm trying to behave myself. Take your time. Act up, okay. <laughs> The thing is, is that the enemy don't care if you live or die. That's right. Yeah. He don't. Why do you think? Why do you think that the enemy attacks? I'm like, he don't care if we live or die. He wants the work to stop. Yeah. He said, if I can stop the work, then I can stop the move. That's huh? Right. That's what he wants. That's what. Listen, you think he worry about you? The enemy knows how dependent you are on God. Yeah. Huh? Why do you think? Why do you think he came to Job the way that he did? Because he knew, the enemy knew that Job was covered by God. Yeah. He knew that he had that God, that God had Job covered on the front, side, back. He said, if you would just remove something from him, yeah. huh, then he'll curse you. Now I want you to know because in the midst of momentum, in the midst of you pressing forth, the midst of you going forth in your life, you're going to have some experiences where you have the opportunity to curse the moment yeah. and stay, or you can say that I can't I can't curse this moment. Check this out. I can't allow Job's wife to tell me to curse God and die. Right. Huh? I have to seize the moment and see what it is that God is going to do. Because in the midst of time, because we don't see exactly what we want to see, because we don't see it clearly, sometimes we feel like nothing's going to happen. But I need some Nehemiahs to stand in this place and say that in spite of him trying to, the, of that spirit trying to attack my mind, trying to attack my heart, trying to attack my ability, trying to say that I can't do this, trying to say that I can't do that, in spite of that sin ballad, trying to diminish me, I'm going to look towards the hills for which come with my help, because my help coming from the Lord. When you look at me, you're looking at God. When you're looking at me, you're looking at the work of God. Ain't nothing that I've done. Nothing that I've done. Nothing that I've done, but it's all of God. Do you see what Sinbad was trying to do right here? And did you notice how he was trying to talk loud? You know how some people, they try to talk loud so that you can hear them. They try to punk you down. I know they hear me. They try to act like they know, but I know they... Well, you know what? You can speak as loud as you want. Because I don't care how loud you speak. I serve the lion of truth. So why are you talking? I got a God that's roaring. And long as I can hear the roar of God, I. I said I wasn't going to preach so hard, I was going to just talk this thing. But we have to understand this. We got to see this right here. We have to see what it is. And then check this out. Then we get to verse 3. And Tobiah, the Ammonite, who was standing beside him. 
Birds of the same feather flock together. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Jesus. So, so, new stuff. Check this out. Tobiah the Ammonite, who was standing beside him, remarked, that stone wall would collapse even if a fox walked along the top of it. Listen, can I tell y'all something? First of all, and this right here, this is not going to sound spiritual, but it is. You got to grow, you got to grow thick skin. You got to grow thick skin. I say it like this. You got to grow thick skin in the spirit. Huh? Because if you respond to every Thing that is said to you, you're gonna waste your time, yeah. you're gonna miss your breakthrough, you're gonna miss that open door, you're gonna miss what God check this out. You ain't they may be talking, but you don't got to respond. Check this out. When you know the capability of God, why would you know in yourself of what they say? What, what the enemy is doing, huh? I know we say that the devil is busy, but do you realize that the devil is busy because he's trying to catch up with God? Because God is omnipotent. God is everywhere at one time. Listen, God ain't got to move. Why? Because he's right there. God ain't got to go. You know why? Because he's already there. But that's why I called him Jehovah Shabbat. But God is there. Oh. Listen. You see how he said, drop that shade up there? That's how we see it. See that shade? That stone wall would collapse and even the fire. Oh, oh, you got jokes, huh? Oh, you got to jump. But I love it, Psalms 37. I, ain't, I don't got it up there on the screen, but I love Psalms 37. Because the Bible talks about, he talks about how God laughs at our enemies. <laughs> Listen, if God is going to laugh at our enemies, what you think we need to be doing? Y'all just start laughing right now. Just laugh. Just laugh. Just laugh. It's a ministry. It's a ministry. Just laugh. Oh, you, oh, you got all money. Listen, when you got a God that can laugh, maybe you need to laugh sometimes. Maybe sometimes we cry too much. Maybe we open too much too much. If we serve a God that can laugh at our enemies, I would still look at our God and say, God, if you laugh, I'm gonna laugh too. If you gonna chuckle, I cut, 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 I'm gonna chuckle too. But I serve a God that's in control. I follow the nature of God. I follow the nature. Did you tell you what I said? So careful with that shadiness of the spirit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you oh you think you can preach? Oh, you think oh you think you're a pastor? Oh, you think you can teach? Oh, you think you can sing? Oh, oh, you think you can serve? Oh, oh, you think you can be a good mama? Oh, you know where you come from? Oh, you think you can be a good daddy? Oh, oh, you think you can do this? Listen, y'all got to assassinate those things yeah, in your ear. Yeah, yeah. You have to make sure those things don't reside and don't, don't take root into your mind. Because just like Tobias and Balak, they're trying to get into the minds of the people. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh God, Hallelujah. We got to move on because I, I got to show you some stuff. Hallelujah. Now you heard all that, all that whatever, right? We heard how Sam Balak was talking about their abilities, talking about their, their wealth, talking about all those things. Yeah. And then Tobias, with his, two, his, his, his little self, he come up in here and he tried to add his two cents. Mm. Let's talk about Nehemiah. Let's go to verse 4. Let's go to verse 4. Yeah. What's the first three words? Let me say this. I got excited. I was supposed to say this earlier. <laughs> we have to understand that in the book of Nehemiah, <coughs> Nehemiah is the author. Yeah. That's why he says, then I prayed. Yeah. This is Nehemiah speaking. Now check this out, because this right here, this, this, you know, I'm like, God, you really, you really trying to grow me too. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because out of all that was said, Nehemiah never cussed the homeboy out, never talked about his mama, didn't slit his tires, didn't burn up their house, huh? Didn't lock them in the house and put some acid or something in there. You think I'm you think I'm foolish, but we got some folk that feel like because it's because they came at you that you're supposed to come back here because it's justified, but it's not. Can I tell you that when you become a child of God, it's never justifiable for you to fight your own battle. It is never justifiable. Huh? 
Listen, I know some. I know sometimes the test is that when they slap you, do I slap them back? <laughs> that's because that's the test in it right there. And I know sometimes we gonna fail sometimes. But can I tell you that as time goes on and on, that you should get better and stronger? Y'all ain't say nothing right there. I say as time progress, huh? You might have cussed them out last year, but this year you should be able to pray for them. your own battle. I don't care what they said about you, your mom, or your children, your cousin. I don't care. Listen. I'm not saying that you talk about my wife. I don't want to swing on you. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that's the test. God is saying, listen, the test is what you're going to do right here. Huh? Huh? Yeah, you can knock go ahead and hit them, but then I'm going to jail. So check this out. Then they go to my wife and hit her some more. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? That's why our weaponry is not what? Carnal. Oh, yes. Huh? Yes. They're not carnal. Yes. So we have to understand, but check this out. What's those three words right there in verse 4? First three words. Then I pray. Then I pray. Then I pray. Then I pray. Yes. Sister Frederica, we need a we need a shirt that says, then I pray. Yes. Huh? Yes. They talked about me, but then I pray. Yes. Oh, they rejected me, huh? but, but then, then I pray. I pray. Their sins. 
for they have provoked you to anger here in front of the builders. Huh? Check this out. That's part is good right here. Because in the midst of the prayer, people don't see. They don't see what I see. Yeah. Because in the midst, you see how, how Nehemiah is telling God to do all this stuff, right? But when you get the verse, when you get to the end of that verse 5, it says, for they have provoked you. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Y'all see what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. got to catch that. It says, they have provoked you to anger in front of the builders. Sometimes we think this thing is about us, but it's about him. Yeah. Huh? If you, if you start reading that prayer, you're like, that ain't Nehemiah. You from Compton? <laughs> <laughs> What's good? <laughs> got something to tell us? But by the time you get to the end of verse 5, you see the relationship that he had with God. Yeah. Because he understood that them scoffing them, them laughing at them, them talking down to them, they didn't realize that when they talked about them and the work, that they were talking about God. Yeah. Uh, that they're talking about God. Huh? But people, if they want to talk about the grace of Christ, y'all let them. Y'all yeah. yeah. hear what I'm saying? Yeah. They want to talk about your pastor, let them. Yeah. Let them. Then I pray. Let them. Yeah. Listen, because we're in a season. Come on. Not that we never were before. Yeah. But I'm talking prophetically to this house. Yeah. We are in a season where we got to make sure our hands are clean. Yeah. We got to make sure our tongue is clean. Yeah. We got to make sure we're walking in the right places. Yeah. We got to make sure that we have a heart to, yeah. that please God. Yeah. Uh, that we're going to get, if we don't, we're going to get into a way of what God wants to do. So you let them talk. Let them talk about Bishop. It's okay. Bishop can take it. Because Nehemiah taught me that when they talk about me, they're talking about God. When they're talking about the church, they're talking about God. When they're talking about this right here, they're talking about the, God, the creator of heaven and earth. So you can talk about me as much as you please. You can talk about the offering of You can talk about me in a post. You can see some inboxes up. Send some emails. You can have a small meeting. You can go down to Walmart and some aisle talk. But one thing I know is that the more you talk about me, the more I'm going to my knees. The more you really to me, the more I'm going to pray for you. The more you're skipping out my name, the more I'm going to pray for you. The more you're trying to touch me, I'm going to pray. Without ceasing, I'm going to pray. Pray. 
way. Nehemiah knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. Deacon Frank put 10 minutes up there, hey man, because I feel the anointing on me, and I tell you what, the prophetic ain't far behind it. Oh God, it almost say, God, thank you, Lord. Ooh. Hallelujah, God. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Understand that you're not up here. I understand the mic in your hand. 
But that doesn't stop the belief or stop the knowing of God. That God said that you're purposeful. Now, one thing you got to know about the giftings of God is that his giftings are rich. It's awesome. Huh? God, he doesn't work in time, but he works in eternity. Huh? So he works at a different pace. But check this out. I want you to think about what God has inside of you. And I want you to see and understand that God said that that what I put inside of you, I'm about to multiply it. <laughs> I'm about to multiply it. I'm about to multiply it. I'm about to multiply it at a speed that won't let you stop, but it's going to make you keep the momentum. He said that that who you are, that you have an equation over your life, that the mass of who you are, it multiplied by the time. And check this out. Whatever time it is, it's going to help you to keep momentum. It's going to help you not to quit. It's going to help you not to go to the tower. It's going to help you to go to where God wants you to go. So I don't know about you, but I'm asking you, huh? multiply me, huh? multiply me, God, multiply me, huh? 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 multiply me, when I say multiply, I ain't talking about no stuff. I'm talking about no stuff. When you got a God like you've got, you worried about some stuff. Man, God, ain't that what you said earlier? We ain't got no worries. What you need to worry about is God multiplying you so that you can keep the momentum, so that you can get through this season of your life, so this season won't barricade you, so this season won't suffocate you. But the God that I serve, he's going to multiply you because he knows what you need. He knows the time that you need. He knows the speed that you need to get to where he got for you to go. I need to go to somebody today. God is multiplying you. Yes, sir. Meaning that He is expanding you, stretching you. He's put check this out. He's multiplying so that you have plenty in you to be able to keep going. How many of y'all ever felt at one time or another that you didn't have enough? You was like, I don't think I have enough to go to this next. Huh? If you ever thought that. God comes to He came to help you today to let you know that you just need to pray a prayer of God multiply me so that I won't lose momentum so that I can do what it is that you want me to do. Do you understand that in the midst of opposition that God has given you a position? Meaning that God has got a sacred place for you in the midst of trouble. God has a divine place in the midst of trouble. Huh? He wanted to show us on the cross just what he had prepared for us. He said the suffering that you go through, you want to suffer for a little while. But then I'm going to establish you. Huh? He said it's not but for a moment. Because the greatest deal of everything is that the work of God has to go forth. That looks different in everybody's life. But the way that it looks the same is that we're all giving glory to God. We're giving glory to God. Ain't it amazing how he'll do this thing for us? He allows us to experience his goodness. But ultimately, it's all about him. You got to understand that you got to keep going. You got to take your prayer life to a different level. You've got to go to a different level in your prayer life. Yeah. Listen, I'm telling you, you've got to go to a different level in your prayer life. Yeah. I'm speaking this over myself. We've got to go to a different level in our prayer life. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's so many things that want to grab our attention. Yeah. Yeah. And it's wasting our time. Yeah. There's some stuff that is wasting our time. Yeah. Now check this out. If it's wasting our time, what do you think is doing for God? God said, I'm trying to get your attention. 
Because this what I have for you. It shall come to pass. You shall see it in the land of the living. Isn't God good, y'all? someone that needs Christ in their life they say this momentum that you're talking about I need that I urge you to come forth it might be you online on Facebook live if that's you you put in those comments that you receive Christ you tired of doing it your way you ready to do it God's way you ready to submit to the power of God through Christ Jesus. If that's you, you put the comments and say, I receive Christ. We will get up with you as soon as possible. Maybe someone in the house that want to rededicate their life. Someone that say, you know, I'm saved, but I just need a moment of, I need somebody to walk with me. To help me to get on the track that I'm supposed to be. the way you want to come. But I just know that God has a momentum for you to overcome the distractions, the frustrations, and the irritations. Let us pray. God, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, because you're such a loyal God. You're so faithful, God. Would you have a, a way that's so sweet, God? Thank you, Lord, for protecting us, God. Thank you, Lord, for nurturing us, God. Lord, because truth be told, Lord, we haven't done everything right, but you have. And God, Lord, we thank you, Lord. But God, Lord, we dedicate ourselves to you right now. God, Lord, we ask Lord, that you would help us in this thing, God. Lord, we want to walk the way that you want us to walk. Lord, we want to move the way that you want us to move. Lord, we want you to, that Lord, to help us to be that which you call us to be, Lord. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would just touch us right now with the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. God, Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would look upon every mind and every heart. Lord, I ask that you would look upon every situation, upon everybody in this place. And you know everybody. You know their situation, God. Lord, it might be somebody that says, I don't have a situation. But the thing is, is that if you're alive, you got a situation that needs God. Because we can't do nothing without him. So, God, Lord, I'm asking, Lord, that you would just magnify yourself continuously in us. Help us to be able to see what it is that we need to see in you. Help us, God, Lord, to be able to depend on you even more. Lord, help us to be like Nehemiah, that we're able to absorb and see, not absorb, excuse me, Lord, not absorb, but we're able to see, but not absorb. Help us, Lord, to go to our prayer, our places of prayer. Lord, that will help us to be able to function with stability in our mind. They help us to be able to make decisions that we need to. They help us to be the best we can to our families. To be the best that we can to our spouses. Lord, they help us to be the best we can on our jobs. God, Lord, we ask right now. Lord, that you would just help us. We thank you, God. We praise you, God. We can't thank you enough. We thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Lord, we count it done right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I, right now, God, Lord, I, Lord, I, I lift up with thoughts to you. I lift her up, God, because I know you are. By your stripes that we are healed. God, I don't care what it's trying to show up. I know that you can show out. So, God, Lord, I ask, Lord, that you will consume her body right now. God, Lord, we come and touch it and agree it on one accord. Lord, just like in the upper room, Lord, that, Lord, that we're in one place and on one accord, God, you moved. So, Lord, we're in one place, God, and I feel like we're on one accord. So, God, Lord, I ask that you will touch her body. Touch her body. Let not catch her state. Let catch her not reside. I ask that you will heal her right now with the mighty name of Jesus. God, touch her right now. Look, Lord Jesus. Touch her, God. 
Lord, encourage her heart, encourage her mind. Lord, be with her, God. Lord, keep reminding her that you know her name. Keep reminding her, God. Lord, that she's never defeated because you're not defeated. Lord, keep reminding her to praise you in the midst of the circumstance. That even on the darkest day, you still exist. <laughs> That you're there with her. God, I ask that you'll do it right now. Go to her right now. But we can all this done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Y'all give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you will sit down for just for a few, few minutes. We do need to do our communion. Just give a few minutes because this is important. We understand that without the blood, yes, this right here would matter. Because we'd be somewhere scared. <laughs> Waiting on somebody to go intercede in the temple for us. I was glad when he said it to me. <laughs> Let us go into the house of the Lord. Why? Because I can go myself and give my thanks and everything for what God has done. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, two deacons to come forth at this time.